I magnify his presence. Rejoice in his presence. Don't take this time in vain. When you get to worship him and be in his presence, he loves the praises of his children. Thank you for that, Lord. If you have any prayer requests, feel free to send them to 407-490-4019. Again, you can send your prayer request to 407-490-4019. We'd love to pray for you. The word says the two or more gather in his name that he's in the midst of us. We're going to declare Psalm 91. So if you can go to Psalm 91, the perfect timing to remind everyone, everyone in this nation, everyone that is fighting right now for their, their peace, fighting for victory, Lord. And we ask for you to be our refuge and our fortress. We need to stand firm in that and believe in that and remember that. And Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. And surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor destruction that makes waste in the day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high in your place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall, shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge, charge of you, you to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, yet the lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set it up upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Glory, glory, yes. glory. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Let's welcome Pastor Street, who is going to do the Bible study. Good night. Oh, alrighty. How many of you are expecting God to speak to you? Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. It's a privilege yes. that we get to hear from the King of Kings and yes. the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. The one who created the whole universe is uh, available for us saying, okay, I'm going to take care of this. Yes. I'm going to uh, show up for you. Um, I always like that part that he would show up for us. Yes. Amen. 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 So our goal is still the same, the prophetic revelation. Why is it so important? The times that are coming, you cannot access them without having a prophetic insight without having a prophetic understanding, without pro having a prophetic direction, you will not be able to walk through it. We have to uh, get our senses ready for that. But before I go into the my Bible study today, I, I believe it, it, it lines up with where, what we are doing. You know, today is the beginning of the Lent and uh, a lot of the uh, 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 church is uh, gonna have Ash Wednesday today. It's a very significant day if you really look at it even though it became a religious um, uh, notion and a religious practice there is a lot to it that you and me can learn also and adapt into our lives today. You know Ashes, if you remember the story of uh, Mordecai when he was Threatened, his life was at a threat. He, the first thing he does is he put ashes on him. That's a that's a symbol of an inner cry, mm -hmm. mourning. 
um, that is why this has been uh, uh, um, incorporated into the early church particularly because this would be a place where we will reflect upon us this 40 days becoming a reflection upon us and drawing ourselves closer to him that was the origination of Lent yeah, by, by, by theory or by idea I, I respect that so much that dedicating 40 days of your year um, just to draw yourself closer to him whether you are not going to eat meats or that and that all those kinds of other factors I'm not uh, I'm talking about that but the primary thing is to be able to dwell in those ashes where we contain ourselves the ashes to ashes dirt to dirt understanding the significance that we are nothing without him That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. understanding reminding ourselves that we need more of him and less of us yes. Yes. ashes represent us he represents the beauty for ashes. Amen. But we represent the ashes. We have to have that inner mourning where you come to a place, that inner cry that tells us about us. This lamentations that we are studying on is not about someone else but about you. That's why this is a reflection of you first. If you can't see for yourself what is your reflection, every other image will be distorted. When you can't see yourself clearly, every other image will be distorted. You know, it, it lines up with the saying that we are so familiar with, hurting people <coughs> hurt others. Hurting people hurt others. Because it is their inner image. That is what is coming out. So what we don't know to how to deal with us, we cannot deal to others. Yeah, true. That's true. This is why many people, they don't know what love is. They try to give love to others. They end up giving what is not love. You know, the notion where we, uh, 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 this is so big, where it says love is love. No, no, no. no. Sin is not love. Sure. Right. In all reality, sin is uh, hatred. That's right. That's not love. You're hating yourself. That's right. If you are living in your sin and you're trying to appropriate sin, that's not love, that's sin. You know, somewhere they have come up with this uh, idea when people were born out of a wedlock, I am my, my mom's love child. Maybe not. True. Now, I'm not trying to be uh, 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 rude here. Let's face the facts. If your mom and dad loved that much, they would have lived with them. They wouldn't mind sticking with each other. Can we be honest with yes. each other now? Yeah, come on. Because we are, but we, you know, why I'm talking about that? Because we haven't tried to course correct then. Today it is too far off. The deflection that started there, we didn't try to connect, uh, uh, stop it there. The church was on board with all those kinds of things and ended up creating a chaos for the whole society. Now, the kids can't even identify who they are. That's true. Come on. Right. As much as we want to play, uh, 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 place the blame on, uh, on Hollywood and <coughs> on the world and all those kinds of things, I'm here to tell you, let's blame ourselves too. That's true. Mm -hmm. The church. Yeah. Because we are so caught up in our depression, we are so caught up in our self-loathing that we didn't find time to go after things. Are you with me here? Mm -hmm. I want us to understand something here. Because the devil wants you to be distracted thinking you have too much on your plate. That's true. Yeah. When you come to that place of real uh, thinking that you have too much on your plate, what do you do? The first thing you will cut off is God. Yeah. Anything pertaining to God. True. 
At one point on a Sunday, nobody had anything else to do but to go to church. Right. Somehow today, every church has to uh, play hard lottery to get people into the church. We have to compete with the bars, we have to compete with the, with the games, we have to compete, you know. We have to compete with all those things to get people in. Thank God I don't have to compete with the holy chicken. It's closed on Sunday. When we had the freeway, when the church had the freeway, maybe did we not do our job the best? Is it worth checking out? I really want to think about that. I mean, imagine that. We, uh, uh, they had Sunday school, they had church, then they had evening service. Yeah. Yes. All Sunday. Yes. Okay. And people were there. Yeah. 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 Some of us might be asking, isn't it too much of a church? I'm like, isn't that too much of TV? Yeah. Amen. Come on. Yep. <laughs> Come on. But I'm just saying, like here, as today the the world, the church is celebrating uh, Ash Wednesday. I want us to look for our ashes, <clears throat> putting ourselves in a place where we can realize and recognize. What Jesus has said, I am the wine and ye are the branches. Without me, you cannot bear food. Whatever, sometimes we bear fruit without Jesus, that is a fruit of death. Whether someone told you or not, that is the truth. Anything and everything that we are trying to do, there is no good outside of God. Amen? Amen. We have to conclude that there is no good outside of God. Without God, God, you know, I have come, uh, one of my buddies, I was talking to him, uh, talking to them. They had, a, they had been given a, uh, an offer of a job which is stunning. Stunning job. Probably a quarter of a million a year. On the other side, there is another job which is not even half of that. But I am proud to say he, uh, they are my friends because they chose the other job because the quarter of a million job didn't find God in it. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hey. Yeah. I'd rather be surrounded by people like that who yeah. chooses God over anything. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> And that's, the, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Those are the ashes we need to find. Are there any, anything that we haven't burned? Mm. Mm. Wow, that's a good word. When we, when we don't burn them, ashes to ashes, it's not happening. Dirt to dirt, ashes to ashes. We need to send ashes where they belong. But what, what we are doing is we are keeping it alive because we are keeping it alive, it ain't getting burned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. So that's why I'm saying like during this season, even though we may not be participating in it in a religious way, let us take this opportunity as we are traveling through this, the lamentations as we are traveling through that inner cry, let this be the time where we can find the ashes. Then we find our inner cry. Yes. Many times your pride is destroying us. True. Your pride is destroying you. True. You know, we, we tell kids to wait and we expect them to wait. We can't wait. Amen. That's true. What a shame. Mm -hmm. What a shame. Yeah. If God wants to visit you then 20, 50 minutes later and you want it now and you somehow make it happen, what will happen? You give birth to Israel's. 
not Isaac's. We, we, we have to understand, to go with God's timing, go with God's way of doing things, how he wants it to be done. Oh, whatever, what's wrong? You can't do that. Are you with me here? Yes. yes. We, we have simplified God too much that forgetting the fact that he is holy. What is unholy? Let me tell you simply. Dealing holy things as common is unholy. Holy matrimony. When you start dealing with as a common thing, it becomes unholy. Holy Bible. When we start dealing with it as a common book, it becomes unholy. The book in itself is not unholy, but your treatment is making it unholy for you. So that's why it is important for us to understand what needs to be burned. Maybe you're trying to keep it too cold, like the other day when, I, when we were in the, uh, 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 this uh, snow trip, we had this, uh, um, I'm, I'm like, I, I got my, all my friends to somehow line up and do this uh, fire pit outside. And them logs are cold. I've been gasolining it like nothing and it is not lighting up no matter what you do because they're cold, super cold. It is not letting the fire consume it. It, it kind of reminded, uh, reminded me of many of us as Christians. Are we too cold to let the fire of God consume us? He's trying to give a gasoline shot of Holy Spirit and we are like, okay, we're going to light up with the gasoline, not us. You know, whenever we are doing that gasoline or anything, it is supposed to help the word catch fire. But what happens when it is too cold, it only catches, the gasoline is burnt. The wood is still there. Yeah. Yeah. In that case, the gasoline is the Holy Spirit. We get all excited when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and works and, and when we worship Him. Are we letting that fire come into us? Now that, that, that same thing Jesus says in the Revelation, you are neither cold nor hot. Think about that. Are we too cold that He can't turn, in, turn us into ashes? Some of the things that we have become so cold hearted, we are dead set on things so much that we are not willing to melt, willing to yield. <clears throat> so again and again, our goal for this is prophetic revelation. The thing even here, even this process of, uh, of Lent, when it was originated, was to be able to see Jesus. To be able to see Jesus in them. That was the journey. That is supposed to be the journey. But it became a religious uh, uh, practice or religious duty. And for me as a kid when I grew up. I saw a lot of these people that are around me. That would, that would take this Lent so, serious, so, so religiously. And as soon as Easter came they got drunk. They are waiting for Easter to come so they can get drunk. That for me didn't motivate at all. <clears throat> for me that person is a hypocrite. You know, it's not about fasting for 40 days. It's about changing your lifestyle. Amen. There should be an opportunity to be able to change your lifestyle. You know, it's a scientific evidence. If you give up on something for 21 days, it is hard for you to go back to that habit. And you've done past that and then you still went. That means you have the desire all the time with you. I'm just giving a simple example. But I'm saying we are... We, we may not be dealing with alcohol or we may not be dealing with all these other things external, but maybe we are dealing with pride. Uh -huh. 
Can we fast from pride for 40 days? Can we fast from selfishness for 40 days? That's an inner cry. That is the inner cry that we have to look for. When we can have the clear clear uh, picture about us, then we will have a, 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 a reflection of our community or, or the race. Otherwise our reflection is distorted by us, then we always look at us, either we are oppressor or oppressed, or some other dis distorted image. Our community, we see that. Instead, if God can let us deal with us, yes, if, if there is, in all reality, there is no such thing as black and white. You are oppressed as much as you are an oppressor. If nobody told you, let me be, let me be straight with you. You think you are a nice person, let me tell you, you oppress many people. You are oppressed, you hurt many people. You're always so over conscious of someone hurting you. How conscious are you about you hurting others? And again, I want us to also understand sometimes hurting others is not always uh, um, based on uh, uh, um, as an act of uh, um, arrogance or as an act of might. I'll, I'll give a good example. Um, uh, if something uh, bad was to happen, thank you. A woman's um, immediate reaction for it is crying. I'm giving an example for it. If that's the case, if, if a man was shouting or telling something and the woman is crying, you think from your image, what do you think? If the man is the oppressor and the woman is the oppressed. But if you carefully watch it, because now the man is going to be conditioned every day. The woman is going to cry, so now I shouldn't even talk. Now tell me who is the oppressed and who is the oppressor. <laughs> okay, I got it. So in other words, it doesn't have to be a violent treatment. Even a silent treatment can oppress people. So that's why instead of trying to blame others as the oppressors, you are also an oppressor. I'm not denying you have been oppressed. We have been oppressed, I agree with you on that. But also we are an oppressor. Let's get, get rid of the oppressor in us. So we may receive God's comfort into our life. Isn't that the example of, of when, when, when Jesus gives an example of that guy uh, uh, um, who owes the king so much and for someone else owes uh, so little to him and he goes after him day and night. The king forgives him for what he owed. But that man was not able to forgive this person. Now tell me who's the oppressor. Uh, now, now um, this is this is the inner cry I like for us to travel through uh, um, today. I like for us to uh, move fast today. Uh, go with me to the book of uh, Lamentations, second chapter, starting at verse one. Lamentations, second chapter, starting at verse one. Remember the basic verse for us, the foundational verse for us is from Luke twenty three twenty eight, which reads, "But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me.'" But weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus never said do not weep. He said weep. Weep with a purpose. There has to be a direction for us to weep. So let's go to Lamentations 2. That is what we are studying last week. Lamentations 1. Let's go to Lamentations 2. Oh. 
how the Lord has covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud of his anger. He cast down from heaven to the earth the beauty of Israel and did not remember his footstool. In the day of his anger... No, 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 look at this thing. You are looking at God as an oppressor here. But what caused him to do that? What caused him to do that? What tipped him off? Was it Jerusalem that tipped him off or was God angry at them? Now we want to think about that. Many times we are so caught up in other people's reactions. Maybe it's your action that caused that person's reaction. Mm. If you want to stop the whole cycle, stop the action. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Jerusalem have brought God to a place where he has to react in anger. The same God who is long-suffering, who is slow to anger, is the same God who is demonstrating anger. This is another dumb ideology many people have about God. God is slow to anger, he is not angerless. Many times we think God is angerless. No, he is not. He is slow to anger. That doesn't mean there is nothing he can get angry about. No. He gives us enough mercy, mercy day after day after day. But there may come a day where he might shut down. There is a day that is coming, it is going to shut down, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. If you and me as a Christian, we should know that. If that is, going, that is a possibility, how much more it is a possibility in every day of our life. There may be a day coming, it's going to shut down on your marriage if you keep pestering it. Or there may come a day where your relationship, there might come a end to it. Are we stretching it too thin for it to break? You know, as a kid, I studied uh, in physics, we study the elasticity and plasticity. The same thing that has the elasticity, if you keep stretching and stretching, you know, elasticity means it will come back to its original state. If you keep stretching and stretching, well, most of the ladies know this, when they use the hairband, yes. <coughs> for after a certain point, there is no band anymore. Mm -hmm. Because the, the elasticity is gone and it became a plastic. Plasticity have come. Okay. At that point, if you stretch, what happens? It breaks. breaks. Mm -hmm. Breaking point. True. There is an ill point and then there is a breaking point. Sometimes if you go go keep going after the ill point, what you get? Breaking, breaking point. point. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is where we have to understand how are we playing our cards. Second verse, please. The Lord has swallowed up and has not pitied all the dwelling places of Jacob. Pitied all the dwelling places of Jacob. He has thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has profaned the kingdom and its princes. You have to understand, there is no stronghold that is going to stand. If we are looking at the economy of our nation and thinking that is our stronghold, that is going to be tipped. Anything and everything, including your individual self, you think your 401k is your security, that is going to be tipped. Whatever is your stronghold, that is going to be tipped, that is bound to be tipped. So instead of going after all these things, let us go to a place where God himself revealed the secret not by might nor by power, but by might. Spirit, says the Lord. Let him be our strength. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying you shouldn't be financially wise. Be all that. Save all that you can. Invest all that you can. Now is the time. Let's be the landlords on this earth. Amen. I don't have any problem with that. But what I'm saying is let us not put our trust in those things. Amen. Amen. Trust me, when you stop putting trust on those things, things will start chasing you. 
more than you can imagine. Third verse, please. He has cut off in fierce anger every horn of Israel. He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. He has blazed against Jacob like a flaming fire devouring all around. Standing like an enemy, he has bent his bow with his right hand like an adversary. He has slain all who were pleasing to his eye. On the tent of the daughter of Zion, he has poured out his fury for fire. Now look at this. He is standing like an enemy is what he, the uh, 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 prophet is writing here. The Lord who is with you and for you is standing like an enemy. Imagine that. That's a very challenging view, isn't it? That's why I always say this, this. We have the saying, we have the scripture where it says, if God be for us, who can be against us? But I always want to remind myself, if God be against us, who can be for me? The devil is already there to kill me. Still kill and destroy. The only thing he has to do is, let, let, God has to take his hand off me. I'm out. Because they're ready to take me out. Everything and everybody around me is trying to kill me. The only thing that is keeping me and protecting me is the hand of the Lord. Is the grace of God. So instead of puncturing holes into the grace of God, let us not tip him on the other side. Instead utilize and appreciate the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Let us live worthy of the grace. Let us live worthy of the salvation. Yes. Isn't that what Paul says? Let us live worthy of our salvation. Even though it is not something you and me have attained, it has been given. Let us live worthy of it. I'm a saved person. I won't do the unsaved things. Go ahead, please. The Lord was like an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He has destroyed her strongholds and has increased mourning and lamentation <coughs> in the daughter of Judah. He has done violence to his tabernacle as if it were a garden. He has destroyed his place of assembly. The Lord has caused the appointed feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion. In his burning indignation, he has spurned the king and the priest. The Lord has spurned his altar. He has abandoned his sanctuary. He has given up the walls of her places into the hand of the enemy. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord as on the day of a set feast. Look at that. What should be celebrated is the victory of God. The celebration is for the defeat. And, I, and I'll give you a good example of it. What happened in uh, 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 New York. When the New York, New York State have made the law that they can kill the babies till nine months. And that is a legal thing in the state of New York. They lit, lit up the Empire State Building. They are celebrating the death. death. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> That's, that's, a, that's a visual example. Keep going, please. The Lord has a purpose to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out a line. He has not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore, he has caused the rampart and the wall to lament. They languish together. Her gates have sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the nations. The law is no more, and her prophets find no vision from the Lord. Look, look, look at that. That is where, why I am pushing ourselves for prophetic revelation. What is the state there? Her prophets find no vision from the Lord. When a prophet can't see, when there is no prophetic voice around us, when there is no prophetic utterance around us, prophetic sight around us. <clears throat> this morning I have come across a, 
a, a, a prophecy against uh, 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 that uh, uh, based on what is going on right now between Ukraine and uh, Russia. I hope you are all praying, and uh, I'm here to encourage you to pray with this also. What happened? What is happening there? You know, actually, in all reality, the Christians in Ukraine, there are a bunch of Christians that are growing, as well as in Russia, too. Mm -hmm. Christian population, people that believe in God is growing. But I want you to understand something here. There is a tipping point that is happening here. The same way how Egypt uh, 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 walked with Pharaoh. Pharaoh's heart was hardened to be destroyed. And that is what is happening right now with Putin. So let's continue to stand with our brothers and sisters on both sides. Peace is not just needed in Ukraine, it's needed in Russia too. Amen. So let's continue to pray. Let's continue to pray for wisdom for the leaders. What needs to happen here, you know, war needs to end. This is not about war ending, it is about having peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. okay. let, us, let us continue to declare the Prince of Peace. Let us continue to stand in agreement. Those people, one of the things uh, we have seen about the Ukrainians is that uh, they are not giving up. They are armed, their people are ready to fight, which is, which is good to see. But on the other side, the church in Ukraine is more equipped now than ever before. They are standing, they are praising, they are, they are moving mountains underground. <coughs> so, <clears throat> let's continue to supply them. That is the prayer that we can supply there. That things will be broken, they will be mer uh, uh, submerged. That, that, that spirit will be destroyed, not just dealt with. Yes. Remember what he said, when God drowned Egyptians, you will never see them again. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Now I'm believing that is where we are going in this, uh, in this. So let's continue to pray for an utter destruction of such a spirit. Because it is not, it is not what you see it is. There is so much that is going on behind the scenes that you and me need to be aware of. A, set, a precedence is happening about the Gog and Magog system that is to come. So let us prepare ourselves in such a way that we are not caught up in the distraction because when the fight, real fight happens, then you should be standing right at that place. This is, from my understanding, this is, a, this is a, what is kind of like a distraction from what the devil is doing. Right. Yes. So let us not get caught up in one thing and forgetting that we cannot lose ground. Right. Mm -hmm. As much as my heart bleeds to see a young child not having the mother and the father there, there is more to it than you and me can realize. Yes. Come on. So let us go in that, in that, in, with that insight. That is where I am encouraging everyone. Let us walk into the prophetic revelation that helps us see through things. Yes. So instead of just being caught up with the thing that they are displaying to us, in all reality, I don't like either one of those nations. Their governance, if I have to say. The so-called Ukraine president is not a nice person. He's an authoritarian in all reality. But that doesn't mean Putin is a nice guy. So what I'm trying, what, 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 what are we uh, uh, left with? We have to understand what is the grand strategy that is going on. What is the devil, or how is the devil fighting behind? In all these things, let us continue, continue to pray and declare that Jesus is Lord of Ukraine. Jesus is Lord of Russia, and Jesus is Lord of the United States of America. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His reign, He will reign, and He will continue to reign in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> if they need strength to stand, let us uh, let us stand in our faith to 
uh, uh, with strength to stand. Whatever support, however God leads us, how we can connect. I see church is so emotional. We do things so emotionally. When somebody black dies, you, you, all the preaching is about black people. When something else happens, all the preaching about that. All the preaching about is this. Now, anywhere and everywhere, I see Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. This is not a struggle that is happening today. No, what I'm saying is, let us not be driven emotionally. Why? What happens is, once this Ukraine war kind of subsides, we give up. We move on to something else. But the devil is doing, planting his seeds, trying to build something to steal, kill, and destroy. We have to go after the root of the problem and destroy them. That is why the Spirit of the Lord has been given to us. So we, so we may deal with the root of the problems, not with the distractions. As much as my heart bleeds for my brothers and sisters that are out there, let us not just get carried away emotionally talking about it and feeling good about it. Let us take ground in the spirit, trying to do what is necessary in the spirit. And as God leads you, be a support financially or whatnot. Whatever God is leading you, do it. But I'm going to tell you something. This is not it. This is not it. Don't just try to go after this as if this is it. All right, let's go. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground and keep silence. They throw dust on their heads and gird themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem bow their heads to the ground. My eyes fail with tears. My heart is troubled. My bile is poured on the ground because of the destruction of the daughter of my people, because the children and the infants faint in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, where is grain and wine? As they swoon like the wounded in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out in the mother's bosom. How shall I console you? To what shall I liken you? O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, what shall I compare with you, that I may comfort you? O oh, virgin daughter of Zion, for your ruin is spread wide as the sea. Who can heal you? Your prophets have seen, seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not uncovered your iniquity to bring back your captives, but have envisioned for you false prophecies and delusions. There you go. The people that are giving information around us, prophets, doesn't always necessarily mean church people. There are people that are speaking a future, that are coming on CNN, that are coming on MSNBC, that are coming on Fox or whatnot. All these avenues, they are trying to declare a future to us that you and me doesn't have to sign up. We will only sign up for what God has signed us up for. Amen? Amen. Amen. We refuse anything that is not of God. Amen. Okay. <coughs> they said when the virus hit, there will be uh, 20 million people dying. There are going to be millions and millions of people dying in the U.S. Last time I checked, it didn't even come close because we refused to participate in that information. That's right. That prophecy. Okay. Every day these people are prophesying over us. There's going to be blood, blood bath in Florida, blood bath in Florida, blood bath. I'm, I'm sorry for all the deaths that happened, yes. but we refuse to participate in that prophecy. Okay. Come on. Right. Yes. Yes. Keep going, please. Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not uncovered your iniquity. I'm, 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 I'm talking just of a present condition, but also remember this thing. There is an information that continues to speak to us. You know, every day I hear some people, Christianity is on the decline. I'm going to tell you something. No, no, no. 
In the name of Jesus, more people are being saved. Every tongue is confessing that Jesus is the Lord. People are coming to Christ in dreams and visions. The Spirit of the Lord is falling upon the people, left and right. Men and women are coming to Christ. Young people, young girls, young, young men, all of them are bowing down and worshiping the King of Kings. The revivals are happening around us. Awakening is happening around us. Reformation is happening around us. In the name of Jesus, we are not are doomed to death, but we are doomed yes. to heaven. Yes. Amen. That is who we are. Hallelujah. Don't let the false prophets yes. tell you otherwise. Yes. yes. But at the same time, church needs to prophesy about our sins. Yes. yes. Our wrongdoing, sin should be sin. Yes. The moment you start covering sin, you are asking for a fall. That is what is happening with the church that is appropriating sin. Love is love. No, no, no. Sin is sin. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on. Keep going, please. All who pass by clap their hands at you. They hiss and shake their heads at the daughters of Jerusalem. Is this the city that is called the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All your enemies have opened their mouth against you. They hiss and gnash their teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Surely this is the day we have waited for. We have found it. We have seen it. The Lord has done what he purposed. He has, his, he has fulfilled his word, which he commanded in days of old. He has thrown down and has not pitied. He has caused an enemy to rejoice over you. He has exalted the horn of your adversaries. Their heart cried out to the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give herself no relief. Give your eyes no rest. Arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift yep. your hands toward him for the life of your young children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. Look at that. This is the call that you and me are, are called for. That is the inner cry. cry. Cry for them. Cry for their salvation. Cry for their well-being. That is what Jesus has said. Weep for your children and your children's children. Weep for yourself. There is a cry that we need to invest on instead of crying about somebody cut you off. Somebody hurt your feelings. Don't waste your tears on those things. When you have important business to cry for. Mm -hmm. Look, somebody didn't uh, write me a thank you card. You crying about that? <laughs> they didn't reply me back. You crying about it. There is something else you need to cry for. Keep going, please. See, O oh Lord, and consider to whom have you done this. Should the woman eat their offspring, the children they have coddled? Should the priest and prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? Young and old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men have fallen by the sword. <coughs> you have slain them in the day of your anger. You have slaughtered and not pitied. You have invited as to a feast day, to a feast day the tares that surround me. In the day of the Lord's anger, there was no refuge, refugee or survivor. Those whom I have borne and brought up, my enemies have destroyed. Look at that. That is, that is what is happening for us. You know, in the 20th verse, if you look at it, should the priest and prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? Think about that. Think about that. That is what is happening now. A priest is someone who is dedicated for the service of the Lord. A prophet, somebody who is dedicated for the voice of the Lord. Those are being killed right now. Because we have fallen into the gimmickry of the church. We are playing church instead of being church. We, are we walking away from serving the Most High? To serve our own interests? To serve our own flesh. He 
even though it is their own doing, a repentance for the darkness of mind. You know, uh, uh, the darkness of mind that is destroying our own progress. That is what we need to pray for. A repentance for that. The darkness of mind that is destroying our own progress. How dark we have gone. How low we have gone. What are we thinking? What are what is becoming a common common uh, 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 thinking practice? You know, when people can celebrate the death of an unborn, that's pretty dark. Yes, it is. When people can celebrate the death of a prophet, that's pretty dark. And in the book of Luke, 13th chapter, he gives some instruction to us, 34th and 35th verse. He talks about it. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jesus says this. The one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets. Imagine that, that is God looking at you. Jesus is saying this. Jerusalem may be a city on the hill. But when Jesus is looking at that city, he says, you are the one who kills the prophets. Imagine ourselves as the United States of America. Maybe we are the city on the hill for many. Is Jesus looking upon us and saying, are you the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to you? That should quiver us. Where are we God? What is our acceptance of your instruction? Where are we? How much? That, is, that should be our inner cry. Can we be more open to your correction, Lord? As an individual, as a community, as a nation, can we be more open for your correction? When your voice is coming to us, when someone is being sent to us, are we stoning it? That's what Jesus saw when he saw Jerusalem. Yet, the saving grace is not stopping there. Saving grace is because he chose Jerusalem to be his reigning city. When he comes back, he is sitting in Jerusalem. He is not sitting elsewhere. That's why I like it. But God says, God will not revoke his gifts. I'm thankful for that, that I can be found. Maybe I'm missing it ten times, but there is an eleventh time I can come back. Yeah. But it would be good if I don't have to use eleven times. Amen? Amen. So he goes, uh, How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her, brood her under wings. But, now look at this, but you were not willing. He can tolerate your misdoings as long as you have a willingness. The problem with many of us is we don't even have a willingness. What do we want to work on? Our willingness. You know, one of the uh, uh, one of uh, the inspirational leaders for me as a uh, um, um, uh, woman of God, she she's been she's a very good inspiration for me. And one of the things that she said, what is the best quality for you or for anyone when they are serving God? That was the question that was asked to her. And I was expecting an elaborate answer and all those kinds of things. She said simply loyalty. Loyalty. And that hit me with a ton of bricks. From there I realized I don't need nobody's talents. 
God doesn't need my talents. God is just looking for my availability. If I'm available, he's going to make me a king. Amen. The shepherd boy found himself available to the Lord. He was willing to go after the lion and the bear. He was willing to go after the Goliath. He was willing to be the king. He was willing to be the mockery. He was willing. Trust me, he never got it together. David never got it together. He's a mess. But he has one thing here. One thing. Willing. Willing. God is looking for somebody who is willing. But you are not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. And surely I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Baruch haba Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Again, see that thing. That is a prophetic revelation. You got to be able to see Jesus for you to be able to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. That is the place that we, you and me have to uh, 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 aspire to be. The simple prerequisite he is asking is willingness. I have a, a, a scripture there which is Genesis 14. I'd like for you to read it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it. I, for the time's sake, I'm not going to uh, I read all of it. Genesis 14. This is a story where Abraham, he was not even Abraham by this time. This is a place where the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah are captured. Along with them, uh, 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 his cousin uh, Lot. I'm uh, not cousin, but uh, uh, nephew Lot. Got captured also. Uh, all the properties were taken away. Now, this always baffles me. An ordinary layman goes after five kingdoms. To wage a war. That is your blessing. That is what God has entrusted you with. The blessing of Abraham. An ordinary person going after five kingdoms. Not only going after he destroys them. But I want you to understand something there. It's, it's a, 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 the, the, the part of that story is redemption. Redemption, what I mean by that is Sodom and Gomorrah, as soon as we say Sodom and Gomorrah, the immediate connection that you and me have is their destruction because of their uh, 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 perver uh, perverted lifestyle or what not, selfishness. They were destroyed in it. That's the main thing that comes to our mind. But before the destruction happened to them, God was giving them an opportunity of grace, an opportunity of protection, opportunity of redemption. Here he sends his own uh, uh, servant, Dave, uh, uh, Abraham, to go wage war for them. To protect those nations. So what I mean by that is, you know, even now connected to the prayer Abraham was praying about Sodom and Gomorrah. If there are about 100 righteous, will you, protect, will you, will you uh, uh, care for this land? He says yes. If there were 50, Lord, will you? The Lord says, yes. If there were 20, will you? He says, yes. If there were 5, will you? He says, yes, I will spare it. Now, I want, to, I, want, I want us to understand something here. The Lord is not in the destroying business. Instead, he is in the redeeming business. Amen. Amen. True. Because everybody wants this nation to be doomed. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I'm here to tell you, we are here more than five people. <laughs> God said He would spare Sodom and Gomorrah if there were five righteous. Hey. So that means the U.S., United States of America, has a better chance. Amen. Amen. Are you with me here? Yes. That is what I want us to see here. His redemption plan is still at work. He is looking for the few. He is looking for some remnant that is willing 
to stand in the gaps that has this heart of cry yes. that can put on the sackcloth that can put on the ashes I got you. I, I, I mean, I, I, I feel good sometimes, you know, well, most of the times these days, if you see the practice, especially in the Catholic Church, when they go to the Mass after they come on the ash Wednesday, you will see a cross on their head with the ash. Even though it looks a little bizarre and all those things, I, I personally want to say something. Let the ash be a representation of you, not the bling bling. I'm not asking you to go dwell in an ash pile. I'm not asking that. <laughs> but I'm saying, let us, let us portray what Jesus has burnt in us. <clears throat> Rather than what you and me have. Amen? Amen. Amen? That was the problem with Jerusalem. So is our problem. So is our nation's problem. If God can spare Jerusalem, if God can spare Sodom and Gomorrah, I encourage you to read that, that chapter very, very much. You will see it. You know, we only talk, whenever we talk about Sodom and Gomorrah, God destroyed it. No, no, no. Now, now look at this. Your willingness plays a huge role in attracting God's wrath. What do I mean by that? You, your willingness or your willingness to do what is not God's will will attract God's wrath. Mm -hmm. The same way, if you are willing to do God's will, it attracts God's grace. Mm -hmm. So it's all in that willingness. That's why God himself said it in his scripture, whoever is willing and is obedient, will reap the good of the land. Now, through our hardness of heart, or compromise, many times we don't see them as uh, equals. Compromise comes out of hardness of heart, whether you believe it or not. Yeah. You have made up your heart that this is fun. That's when you start compromising. It's no different than hardness of heart. We always try to make everything, hardness of heart means, oh, it's a big thing. You said this guy is sold, sold his soul to the devil. That's the person who has hardness of heart. No, no, no. Somebody who compromises has a hardness of heart too. It's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So through our hardness of heart, or compromise, are we into a no return zone? That's the question I'd like for us to provoke us. Are we going, going into the zones of no return because we haven't, we are not willing to give up on our compromise? That we are not willing to give up on our hardness of our heart? That's, that's the beginning of my example where I said when the plastic becomes elastic, uh, when, the, when the elastic becomes plastic, it's no written zone. Can't do much about it. So my prayer today is that we repent, we come to a place where we have these ashes upon us that would draw us close to him, not away from him. Yeah, amen. That would bring us closer. This whole journey of, of lamentation is about drawing ourselves close to Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. You got something out of this? Yes. All right. Awesome. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Anybody that is online, we are praying for you. We are believing. We serve the God who is resurrected. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we continue to believe in that. We continue to live in that great victory that God has given us. Let us not forget to reflect through this time an individual reflection, a community or a race reflection, and then you will have a city reflection. And once you have a city reflection, a nation reflection.
Thank God this last Sunday, some of us, we were able to go through and join as a city force. We were able to pray for the city. Amen. All different denominations, all different groups of people that have walked in. And it was beautiful for us. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining in. Thank you for always supporting what God is doing in and through us. God bless you. We love you. See you soon. Amen. Pastor.